So welcome everybody to Trinity Sunday. And right now we're just going to run through a few reminders, but first we like to unmute everybody. We're gonna take a risk here. Unmute you all. Ooh, you have to unmute yourselves. I can't unmute you. I shall. So let's Hi, just all do a shout out. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Sunday morning. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi, Margaret. Just the whole crowd is all of our noisy selves. Just for a minute. So we'll let a couple more people in to say their hellos. So if you didn't get to say hello, shout it out now. Happy Trinity Sunday. Oh, hello, hello. There we go. Good morning. Awesome. Good morning. I'm going to mute everybody. Sorry, here we go. Okay, and if by any chance I haven't successfully muted you, I would ask you to meet yourselves, but it looks like I've got everybody so far. So let us um, just run through a couple of our announcements before we start our actual worship. And first thing is, remember this is a communion Sunday. So if you want to participate in communion today and you don't have elements with you, right after the announcements would be a great time to just get up, or right now if you want to, and grab some kind of a food item. It could be anything and a glass of water, your cup of tea, some juice, whatever you have, to create a communion experience for you. And we will share our communion together. I have here my gluten-free muffin and a goblet with some water in it. The other announcements for today include that um, we wanna of course always thank the people that have contributed to our music and our experience. Chris is as always doing the magical production. He's the man behind the curtain from the Wizard of Oz right now. So you can't see him, but he's there. Alan Labrie, as always, is sending us and providing to us beautiful compositions that we hear throughout our service. Billy has been working with our choir and is present helping us create music together. And then we have guest musicians who have offered their, their talents to us. Heather Pearson's song this morning, we will be hearing the audio from a main artist named Alan Sockabasin. You'll understand more about that shortly. And then we will be hearing the music from multiple churches in Ipswich, England, which is a gift as well. And then I just wanna run down a couple of reminders. We have graduations coming up this week, so we want to acknowledge that we have our own eighth graders who will be graduating tomorrow. So wave at our, we have at least one of our eighth graders with us. We can clap for her. And we have high school students who will be graduating. I bet we have some people going up into middle school as well. And we have college graduates my own uh, future son-in-law among them, right? So just, you know, congratulations to all those who are achieving these milestones in very creative and unusual ways in these days and times. So just, just keep them in mind. We will have, um, instead of a young people's choir tomorrow, we're going to have a young people's puppet storytelling gathering for anybody that can make it. And don't worry, we're going to do the puppets many times. So if you don't get a chance to use your puppet tomorrow, you get to use your puppet very shortly. But I know people have been making puppets out there. 
I know Nora made a puppet. I got to see hers. It's very cute. And we will be having cocktails and conversations again this coming Friday. And we're going to start into a theme of comic voices or experiences from the Bible. So should be intriguing. Can't tell you exactly what the scripture is yet because I'm still doing some research on where we're going to start. And those are the announcements I have for today. Um, you will probably have been receiving all kinds of emails with many kinds of resources and updates on various community gatherings. So continue to watch emails for any sharing that I can do about what's going on in our valley. If you are not receiving emails from us and you want to, I do encourage you to email the church, jcchurch at jacksoncommunitychurch.org. And at this point, I would like to move us into a moment of centering. So we are going to again enjoy one of Heather Pearson's compositions. This one is called One Mindful Breath. And I believe it will move us in the direction of thinking about making change in our world and how we can do that together. So please center yourself with this beautiful song. If I can take one mindful breath, if I can take one mindful step, I may never know what kind of change the world will see. But if I can take one mindful breath, if I can take one mindful step, then I can remember that change begins with me. If I can take one mindful breath, if I can take one mindful step, I may never take one mindful breath if i can take one mindful step then i can remember that change begins with me if i can take one mindful breath if i can take one mindful step i may never can take one mindful breath if i can take one mindful step then i can remember that change begins with me if i can take one mindful breath if i can take one mindful step i may never can take one mindful breath if i can take one mindful step then i can remember that change begins with me then i can remember that change begins with me Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy talking to all you guys and you can't hear a word I'm saying. Um, okay, so we're going to join in the call to worship now. And Bob will be the leader for the voice of the people and I will be the leader for the uh, leader part. So please join us in the call to worship. Creator God, call us all. You declared, O Lord, that our sons and daughters would prophesy. 
The young will see visions while the elders dream dreams. Resurrected Christ, guide us all. You have told us, great God, what is required to do, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Holy, Holy Spirit, move us to action. So that justice rolls like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Take away all guilt, except that which is good. We offer For our worship, worship and the fruit, fruit of, of our, our lips to you, to you our, God. our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Uh, you can hear inside what we just did, the challenge of doing live readings, um, because there's a, a lag in the sound, and it seems to be a piece of what we can even talk about today is, you know, listening, the art of listening and the art of patience in these times, and that the story will come across, but it may not come across as fast as you would like it to, or just the way you want it to. Uh, you know that we have turned to a tradition of asking people to send in their prayer requests in advance whenever possible. And, and so people have indeed shared their prayers with us this morning, and I would like to share those prayers with you. Tom and Cheryl ask us to hold in our prayers a dear friend and a pastor of theirs, Reverend John Mills, who died. So we hold in reverence his life, and we hold his family in the light, and we give thanks for his long life of work in areas of justice and equitable outcomes for all people, and that he was a living example of listening more than talking and trying to bring people into meaningful conversation we give thanks for Reverend John. We have a prayer from Kit and Bob for Kent, Bob's nephew, I believe, who had a stroke this week and for his recovery. And while we think of those that are recovering from stroke, we ask also for ongoing prayers for both Richard and Paulette these are life-changing events and in the way of that all of us ex have been experiencing but exacerbated it's a new normal and you don't go backwards to who you were you are changed forever by these experiences and i say this too of those who are living with other kinds of challenges we have among us people who have been living with cancer we have in this community people who are experiencing new cancer diagnosis and just beginning the journey of treatment. Some of them have been named to us and some of them ask for confidentiality. There are so many people on this journey and a lot of people are going through this journey feeling a little bit more alone because of the restrictions of the pandemic. Um, complicated to stay healthy and because immune systems are compromised and so it, it, it makes your world a little bit smaller sometimes and adds more stress. So we just hold all those who are on these journeys of healing. And again, healing journeys is another that we will be talking about this morning. Uh, cancer is not the only thing that is happening in our community. We have people who are living with many different kinds of challenges mental health challenges, depression and suicidality, or uh, other diagnoses that become more exacerbated again by these times. People who have things happening in their bodies, some of which can be explained and some of which can't, some of which have been there for a long time but continue to rise up and create challenges, and some that are dormant right now or being managed, but just hold all those with changing bodies in mind. Those others who have been raised up, Michael, who will be going for a stem cell transplant within a week and a half, and we ask for his stability 
and for a strong immune system for him until that time so that he can go through his transplant. Maureen, who is in recovery from many health complications, we think again of the families of Jean and we think of the family of Dick and we hold his wife Claire in our hearts. We name George, Brianna and Ahmad. Their names are being lifted up all over the nation today in an act of remembrance and we add our prayers to those of those that are being raised all over the country for, again, reverence for life. I also lift up caregivers for those that have been challenged. I lift up those who speak out for what they believe, but I also lift up those who are on the front lines, our policemen, our firemen, our military, our National Guard. I lift up those who in so many different ways are working for peace and want peace. And this is the complexity of what we undertake as a nation and I lift it up as a journey that we are taking together and that all those who are participating need our prayer. We think all is of Zimbabwe and our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare. And we think also of the communities in Honduras that we have been actively supporting. We think of those who have died because of COVID. Let us never forget the great cost of this pandemic in our own nation and around the world. And although you have been quiet, I ask you now for a moment of your silence as we ask God to hear those prayers that we have lifted up. And then I ask us all, together again together, and imagine each other's voices as we pray together the prayer that we were first taught by Christ when we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Just a reminder of what we sound like when we get to be together. But know that your voice is heard and the one who listens always can hear you no matter where you are. At this time, we will be reading from the scriptures of Micah and 2 Corinthians. The first reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And a reading from the letter to second, the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 5 through 14. Examine yourselves to see whether you live in the faith. Test yourselves. 
Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed. But we pray to God that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. And we pray to God that you may not do anything wrong. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we are weak and you are strong. This is what we pray for, that you may become perfect. So I write these things while I am away from you, so that when I come, I may not have to be severe in using the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So ends the reading. Next, we're going to have a piece of special music by the artist I mentioned earlier. His name is Alan Sockabasin. He is a member of the Abenaki Nation, and he is offering us Amazing Grace, sung in two languages. And again, multiple languages, multiple voices. This is a time for listening and hearing that there are many ways to say things, to understand things, and to translate things. Please cherish this song. My version of the song I call Ijiasagina Guak. Elihid, 
This time I remembered to unmute myself. I want now to ask you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this morning, we had an exciting experiment when I went to the gazebo. And we had most participants still calling in from home on Zoom. But there were five of us gathered in person, socially distant, masks, chairs, and we were trying to do this hybrid version of gathering uh, but uh, I was working with my phone, right? So my phone was the mediating platform. And the people that are sitting at the gazebo couldn't see the little tiny faces on my phone. And I had to put my earphones in just to be able to hear the voices on the phone. And so then the people that were sitting at the gazebo couldn't hear the voices on the other side of that screen. All the people that were in Zoom could hear each other, but we had uh, two different communities trying to talk to each other and share an experience together. And so I was sort of in the middle and I would hear what one person in Zoom was saying and then share it with the people at the gazebo. And when somebody from the gazebo was sharing a prayer idea or a thought, I would repeat it for the people that were in the Zoom gathering. So it slowed us down. Um, it changed the conversation a little bit. It focused us in certain ways. And we know that we'll continue to play with the technology and see if we can create a more connective form of this experience. And as we eventually explore coming back into worship in person or do hybrid of that, the same thing will happen. But I offer this to you as a personal experience I had just today about translating multiple voices across different communities and different experiences much in the way of Alan Sockabasin's song offered to us in two languages. So much of what is happening in our world and in our country and even in our own community today uh, is complicated. And it's easy for us to be caught up in binaries. Um, people, people who don't want to belong in some ways do want to belong in others and so they gather themselves together under a certain label or a certain movement. And it starts to feel like a, a lot of people have been saying this, that I'm being asked to take a side. I'm being asked to choose a category to which I belong. I have to wear a label. And if I don't wear this label, then I'm against something if I'm not for it. But I don't believe that our community is that simplistic, nor that the story of our nation can be dumbed down into something so binary, so dualistic, so black and white. You'll see I'm wearing black and white, but I wore my stole with about as many colors and chaos as you can imagine, because both of these things are happening. We're trying to organize ourselves. We're trying to create change. And I think the work of people of faith is to remember how and why we do that. Micah, in his simple phrase, tells us that God requires three things of us, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And in conversations with different community leaders this week, because we're all trying to figure out how to respond to these events and, and create a meaningful conversation and response together and to bring different stakeholders into dialogue with each other. One of the things we talked about is that healing, which is something our, commu our communities and our whole nation is trying to do heal through this pandemic and all the other ways that we've been hurt. Forgiveness, this process that we are going through to remember and name what has happened in the past, to look at it and take 
responsibility for the ways that we can help create change in response to that history and then to work together on that change and then justice justice is not an outcome although it's a noun the phrase of micah is to do justice it is a verb it is a journey it is a process and an undertaking with many steps it is not instantaneous and it requires listening and voices from all sides to be heard and for us not to estrange each other or point the finger outward at someone else and say, you are doing this, but to look inward first and know what we ourselves can change in ourselves and in our community. But then also when we see people that we think represent something that is different from our own selves, to ask them to be part of our conversation and make our conversation complicated and deep and meaningful. It's easy to look at someone in a uniform and think that they represent all the wrong things. And yet we know that the people in our community are good people who get up every morning to try to create peace and keep people safe. They deserve to be invited into conversation as do those that have taken the time to create a sign and stand up for something that they believe in. I refuse to be limited by a single label or movement and told that I am against something if I don't stand up for something else or if I won't wear that specific label because I believe in all children of God. I believe that we are all beautiful and precious and that reverence for life must be extended to all of us. And that yes, we must remember and name those who have been hurt along the way. And yet we must also look at the people that are being turned into one dimensional characters and know that they too have stories and voices. Alan Sockabason sang to us in two languages because his identity is complex. We all have complex identities and our community reflects that. And the Trinity Sunday is a powerful reminder that God's self is complex, that God's self is said to be three persons, God, the creator, Christ, the one who walks with us, and the Holy Spirit who lives among us and shifts us and moves us and inspires us and will not let us rest until the vision of an equitable and sustainable world for all people is something that is within the grasp, if not of us, then our children. God's self is said to be complex and I want to give us some images of God's self in this Trinitarian form. In the first image that I would like to share with you, we see an image of God in a diagram. God the Father, God the Creator in one part of a triangle, the Son, the Christ in another part of the triangle, and the Holy Spirit anchoring the other point of the triangle. And the three things they teach us about the Trinity are that God is three in one, that each of these identities of God, personages of God is separate and distinct, and yet they are all part of God. And one is not dominant over the other, that they are all equal. In the next image, we see metaphors for what Trinity can look like. We've been told to look at an egg, at the yolk and the white and the shell, or to look at the states of water, solid, gas, and liquid, but those don't really get to the idea of the Trinity. And so we try this image of the family, of each parent and the child, although this is a somewhat hierarchical idea, the image of family and relationship and distinct personages who together create an entity the idea of God as a relational God, a communal God who is always in relationship one with another, but also has space for us in that relationship. And in the image that comes next, we hear the words of Augustine, 
who said, now when I, who am asking about this, love anything, there are three things present. I myself, what I love, and love itself. For I cannot love love unless I love a lover. For there is no love where nothing is loved. So there are three things, the lover, the loved, and the love. Okay, again, this is metaphorical, it's complicated, but let us offer the next image, which represents perichoresis or dance. So imagine that the love of God connected by these three personages is a movement, is a process that is unfolding in our world, and it creates a space that each one connected to the other creates that heart, that center, that place where we are invited to reside. In the next image, we see how that becomes translated into symbolism in our culture. For instance, this is a Celtic knot, and you can see the movement within that symbol, but you can see the integrity and the wholeness of that symbol. The power of the Trinity as an example of God is to say that there is strength in diversity and that there is unity in our diversity as well. In the next image, we see a more traditional depiction of the Trinity. We see the Father holding on to the figure of Christ and the, Sp the Holy Spirit is that dove between them. And then we see people peering in, two angels, one at the keyboard and one behind the keyboard, and a man praying, a priest. There are two versions of the Trinity being shown to us, one earthly and one divine. And in the next image, we see an ancient biblical illumination. And again, we see God shown as a Zeus-like white male with the big long beard and the long flowing white hair. We see the Christ figure on the other side holding the cross and bearing the marks of the crucifixion. And we see the spirit between them depicted again as a dove. Then we move forward again to yet another image. These are traditional depictions of, again, that same trinity, the, all, the fatherly paternal figure of God on the right with his long hair, Christ reaching out to him, and the Holy Spirit between them. And yet another depiction in the next image, very similar. And in the image that follows, this is a mosaic, and we see the triangle over the head of God, reminding us that they are connected. Then we move again to an image that is a wood carving from Poland. This is a, a different depiction of God. Uh, he looks still, still like an elder, and he's holding the lamb, and above him is the Holy Spirit, and God wears that triangular marking over his head, and then there's creation all around them. In the next image, we can see a chasuble with the embroidery of the Trinitarian images. God and Christ with their arms outflung in deep embrace and the Holy Spirit above them. In the next image, we see an unusual depiction of Trinity. And I think of this because one saint saw the Trinity as a chord, as three notes that together created a singular sound. And here are three musicians creating music together. And then in the next image, three women by the same Cameroon artist, also representing Trinity. And then another image that follows, again, three different instruments, a trinity of instruments creating song together. These are more metaphorical ideas of trinity, but they remind us of the power of different voices lifted up together, creating something that changes all of us, a singular song that we sing together or create together. And in that next image that comes to us, we see the stained glass and the figure of Christ shown three different ways. On the left, creator, creator, in the middle, Christ, and on the right, the Holy Spirit. And then we see 
two more versions of the stained glass. In the next image, we see the hand of God above Abba, Yahweh, the Lamb, Christ, on the lower left, and the Holy Spirit on the bottom right. And in the next image, another variant on this same depiction, the cross of Christ, the Holy Spirit above, and the hand of God on the bottom right. And in the next image, a triptych that takes us through history, a traditional icon on the left, and then on the far right, a Native American sh shown as the elder or the God figure, a hawk or an eagle as the Holy Spirit and the figure of Christ then. These are painted by Father Giuliani who chose to depict uh, take a, traditional iconic images, but use Native American references to help us rethink what the Trinity, what God might look like if God is coming into our world and using our language and our context to speak to us. And then we move forward to the next image. This is a famous icon by Rublev. And the faces look all the same. But these are the three angels that visited Abraham. And on the far left is the image of God. In the middle is Christ looking at God, the creator, but then blessing the sacramental elements and pointing with the left hand to the Holy Spirit. And though the Holy Spirit has one hand on the table over the communion, over the blessing, the feast that Abraham offered to them. The Holy Spirit's movement is not closed, but open so that we are invited into the, the frame of this painting that was painted in 1411. It was painted 600 years ago. And even then, in that idea of the Trinity, that idea of God and community, the fourth person in that relationship is you, is me, is us, being invited into connection with God's self, with that holy gathering. And I want to move us forward to this final painting, which is a recreation of Rublev's icon. But you can see here that all of the architecture and the tree and the mountain remain the same. It's three women of three different races holding hands over a flag, a rainbow flag that shows the colors of many countries and ethnicities and races, all as a rainbow beneath the sacramental elements of grape and wheat. And they hold their hands one to another and the Holy Spirit and the creator both, one points outward and one beckons to us and asks us into relationship. And I am grateful for both the ancient icon and the 21st century icon that remind us what God is able to do and that us call us into community, call us into the complexity of relationship to a God who can be creator, Christ, or comforter for us, who has more to say than one story, who asks us to listen, to learn from each other, to refuse to be narrowed down to one story or one label, but to recognize the value of each of us in this community and to slow down, to take a breath, and be patient, not with injustice, but with the process of doing justice and healing and forgiving. These are processes. They are not accomplished tomorrow. They require struggle and conversation and work and maintenance and reinterpretation and where there is not representation that new stakeholders will come to the table and that we will reinvent what must be reinvented together and it may not deliver every single thing that any one person or any one group would like to see but that we will struggle toward a world that is sustainable and equitable 
for all the voices that have been raised and for those that speak on behalf of those who have been silenced and that we will learn to do a whole lot more listening than talking. I offer you in closing this blessing from Jan Richardson and then a musical blessing from the Church of Ipswich. Jan Richardson says, the healing that comes, a blessing for you from me. I know how long you have been waiting for your story to take a different turn. How far you have gone in search of what will mend you and make you whole. I bear no remedy, no cure, no miracle for easing your pain. But I know the medicine that lives in a story that has been broken open. I know the healing that comes in ceasing to hide ourselves away with fingers clutched around the fragments we think are none but ours. See how they fit together, these shards that we have been carrying and how in their meeting, they make a way we could not find alone. To whom will you listen? Who has labeled you and asked you to narrow down your world? And who may you have labeled? Who is essential to you in these times that you haven't even realized was part of your quarantine until you look back and you realize that I see this person every week and every day. And have I ever asked them, him or her, her story? Take the time to hear someone's story this week. I invite you now to cherish this offering in music from many churches and many voices from Ipswich, England. Thank you. 
I can't say it better than those singers said it to us. God is with us through everything. Our struggles and our hopes. God does not promise an easy solution, but God will walk with us through this if we will only walk with each other and listen to each other and reach towards each other as God has reached out to us. We are called to do justice love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. We invite you to take a moment to remember that you, many of you, have made a commitment to this church, which has in turn made a commitment to being a partner in this community. And if you are able to, in any sustainable way, to continue to make your offerings to this church, whether you go to jxncc.org or you write a check or you find a way to tuck some cash into a basket and just put it where you can see it and bring it along when you can, your promise helps us keep the promise to others. And together we are lifting up our community.
And we are a vital part of that walk that continues of healing, forgiveness, and doing justice. This is the time when we come to communion, and so we ask you to gather your elements. The great story of the breaking open of our church, how we became the church through the breaking open of the body of Christ and the outflowing of the love of the creator and the Christ and the comforter into the lives of the first followers who took their stories and went out into the world and then created communities that were knit together by the words of Paul and other people who went from community to community and helped them figure out how to be church together because they had arguments all the time. Discord and conflict goes as far back as our church, as far back as our Hebrew scriptures. But the great story of Christ is the love that meets us where we are and asks us to do one simple thing to gather up the elements of being in community, the bread and the wine, the water and the food, and bring them together and feed all people and eat in each other's company as an act of recognition for our humanity and our common shared experience. So I call down the presence of Christ and the love of the creator and the abiding spirit to be with us and to bless today the elements that we gather before us, each in our own separate and safe places, that we may share together the experience of communion. Please, if you would, pick up your element, your muffin or your cracker, or your piece of toast or your pretzel, whatever you might have. And as you break off a piece and take this small bite in the taking of this bread and this food, do so in remembrance of the great love that flows out and holds all the lives that have been lost and all the lives that are living now and the generations yet to come within the power of that embrace. We ask you now to take up the cup into which Christ poured out Christ's self and a love that changes everything. The love that meets us here on our street corners and our storefronts and in our homes, wherever we may be. As you drink, do so in remembrance. Brothers and sisters, please join me in the brief prayer of thanksgiving. We ask, O oh God, that you will indeed bless the fruit of our lips, that you will remind us how we become community together, shaped by your love, remembering your story and carrying it within us, like a light walking your way. We give thanks for your presence in this struggle. We give thanks for the hope that you offer us in the voices that have been raised up in song, in diversity, in unity. Bless our lives. Amen. And friends, at this time, let us 
join together in song ourselves in community we're going to sing one verse of holy 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 and then we'll move to our benediction song and then you can stay and listen to the music of alan and chat with each other at the end of the service or be on your way to start your day Then we'll move to our benediction, our beloved song with which we take our leave of each other.